Hi there, folks. We have to do an insert edit. The camcorder got damaged. When the camcorder was sick, it damaged the videotape. And on the videotape were four jokes that belonged to you. And so we have to do those jokes over because you need all the laughs that you can get. So here's the jokes. Now, this is a maternity hospital, and it's a waiting room. And the nervous new father said to the man next to him, Here, have a cigar. And the man next to him said, uh, Oh, congratulations. What is it, a boy or a girl? And the nervous new father says, I don't know one cigar from another. Now, have you heard about the gardener's exercise program? Okay, you start out fresh as a daisy, and you end up bushed. Now, R Richard Simmons says that swimming will give you a good uh, physique, a good, good figure. But I'm not too sure about that, folks. Have you ever taken a close look at a duck? And that said to the taxi cab driver, could you back up for a mile and a half? And the taxi driver says, why? And that says, because I'm a dollar and a half short. This is the addition to Glendora Cheerful Look at Life. Now, what do you say we go to interview some more people to tell the children how they started on their careers and how the children can start on such careers themselves today? It's all of Manhattan. It includes all of Manhattan. Correct. So the official title is what, please? U.S. District Judge. U.S. District Judge. Southern District of New York. Southern District of New York. Judge, you were born where? Uh, well, I was born in the city, but I've actually been a lifelong resident of Westchester County. You were, really? Yes. Yeah, that's nice. You went to school here? I did. Uh-huh. And uh, also attended New York Military Academy. Oh, you did? Is that a good background for almost anything? I would uh, think so. Really? Yeah. It really is? Yeah. Very good. You might bear that in mind, boys and girls, that that would be a good background. And then you went off to college? Went to Providence College. Yes. And then to uh, Albany Law School. Albany Law School. And then... Uh, after you passed your bar and everything, uh, where did you, uh, what was your first assignment, or were you a... <clears throat> I practiced in the city with a large firm for a very oh, short period, yes. and <laughs> then uh, left and came back to Westchester County and spent uh, my entire professional life in, uh, in Westchester County in the Ninth Judicial District, some of that time in the state court, and last uh, June... Um, I went into the federal court in Manhattan again. Yes, but it, it was such an interesting progression. Now, what was the first one? The, uh, the first court? The first court, yes. Well, after 12 years of practicing law, yes. I went to uh, the family court. The family court in S Westchester County? In Westchester County. I see. Served there for uh, three years. Yes. And then went on to the Westchester County Court. Westchester County Court. That's uh, a court that tries uh, criminal cases primarily. Yes. Spent uh, four years in the county court. In the county court. And then was elected to the uh, New York State Supreme Court. Oh. And I served there for approximately seven years. What an interesting career. Well, it's been a lot of fun. Now, that's the New York uh, Supreme Court, but that would be in Westchester County. The Ninth Judicial District, which includes Westchester County. Oh, that uh, includes it. Rockland, Orange, Duchess, Ooh. Putnam, and uh, I guess I included them all. I think the five so. counties. Yeah, Rockland, Orange, Orange Putnam. Putnam West Duchess, Dutch, Westchester, and Duchess. and Duchess. Boy, that's a big district, isn't it? Well, it was a lot of fun traveling around the different <laughs> courthouses. You enjoyed that, yeah? I did. I did. enjoyed it very much. You, you felt somewhat analogous to um, Abe Lincoln when he was a circuit <laughs> yeah, rider. when he was a circuit rider, right. And then you were appointed. Well, then I received a telephone call from the president. Uh, it happened to be on my mother's birthday. Really? And uh, he told me that he was going to nominate me uh, to the... Um, uh, to the federal bench, the district court, Ooh. and uh, by coincidence, my mother was present in my chambers when I received the call, and uh, he asked Ooh. to speak with her and wished her a happy birthday. Did I thought he that really? was really nice. R President Ronald Reagan. Yes, yes, he did. Isn't that? And a she thrill. instantly became a hit with the senior citizens in Pelham, <laughs> where she lives. <laughs> I bet she did. She right? did. Oh, isn't that a thrill? So there yeah. you were, and here came a call from the president. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a big yeah. thrill. And your mom was a big hit with him, huh? That's correct. Yeah. Now, when's your mom's birthday? When was that? Well, it was on January 18th, uh, and uh, it, it was a year ago, yeah. this past January. Oh, I bet she was thrilled. She was. I she bet was she was indeed. thrilled. Well, you know, my mom met Ronald Reagan. Did she? Yes, she did, Where? really. In Buffalo, New York. He came there, uh, boys and girls, to run for president to get the Republican nomination, and it was the first time... It was. How did that go now? He ran for it, and then who won? Uh, Ford. Well, that was the nomination, I think. Yeah. This was that in the was primaries. It was, you're, you're it was that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, and then Ford got it, and then he came back again. Yeah. Oh, it's a thrill to meet the president, I tell you. Uh, Judge Duranco, could you tell the boys and girls um, what your work consists of in the Southern District? 
Well, uh, my work consists of meeting with lawyers and uh, attempting to yes. resolve uh, conflicts between uh, litigants, yes. uh, hearing cases, uh, helping to select uh, juries and uh, charging the jury with re as to the law that applies in a given case, and in a, in a real sense, uh, trying to resolve grievances between people. Yes, yeah. And that's I bet it, it makes you feel good when you get them resolved. It does. Yeah. It does. It's great satisfaction. When Judge Duranco comes back, boys and girls, he's going to tell you how you might start on a legal career today. And this is a chat with Glendora. Judge Duranco, what advice would you give a youngster to start out to be a lawyer today? Well, I would advise any youngster who uh, thought that he or she might want to uh, enter the legal profession to spend some time either with an attorney or uh, go over to a, the courthouse and watch some trials. Oh. I think that might at least familiarize you, familiarize you with what uh, the practice of law may be like. That's a good idea. And, uh, of course, uh, a, a preparation, an academic preparation for any profession is important. And uh, in the law profession, particularly, one should... Uh, uh, like to read and and uh, be able to write fairly well. Oh, really? Yes, okay, I would so think you so. You've got to practice those skills. Yeah. And anybody can go into the courthouse and watch? Oh, sure. It's oh, open yeah. to the public. It is. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. I see. Yeah. And then if you aspire to uh, be on the bench as a judge, what, what, how would you go about that? Well, of course, uh, if we work backwards, one must be an attorney to be a judge. So you have to have a, a law degree and... Uh, Prior to obtaining a law degree, one needs a college education, and prior to that, a good high school good education. High school, yeah. Studying is very important. Um, if you uh, wish to be a judge, I would think that you should attempt to uh, have a great deal of patience, be able to listen to both sides of a controversy, and not jump to a conclusion. Yeah. Uh, be judgmental rather than an advocate, as trial lawyers are expected to be. Oh, yeah. um, see the other person's point of view, help to resolve grievances between people yeah. and enjoy doing that. Yeah, that's right. Well, that was nice of you uh, to come up. Did you come up from Manhattan today? Yeah, yeah, I did. That was really nice of you to come and tell us about the president calling you. Well, it was nice uh, to be able to come home a little early because <laughs> I, I dropped off, uh, uh, I got off at Pelham and then drove up from there. Oh, you did? Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Gee, we appreciate your coming, Judge Dora. My pleasure. Nice to be with you, Glendora. Oh, thank you. And this is a chat with Glendora. You have to be a collected person. That means you get your act together, become integrated, don't be torn and pulled in a dozen directions. I'm reorganizing my own life and ministry to focus on building this church as the greatest church in the world. And that will happen because it's a God-given dream. And... I find, as I looked at my life, I was pulled here, pulled there, pulled here, pulled here, pulled there. Get your act together. Become integrated. There must be a North Star. There must be a Sun. And the Earth revolves around it. Become a collected person until you've got the pieces together. Then you've got to be a corrected person. That means you're making mistakes. Find out what they are. Straighten it out. Some of your answers are wrong. Even though they've been a part of your system all your life. Find out. Don't kid yourself. Change the answers. You don't know it all. In some ways you're not as smart as you think. The quicker you find out, the better it'll be for you. You've got to be a collected person. Then you've got to be a corrected person. And then you've got to be a connected person. Well connected. Connected to power sources. Connected to sources that keep your heart on target with Jesus Christ. And with God Almighty. Well connected. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now you can see 
the power of a God-given dream. The dream becomes the integrating force in our life. And I want to accomplish this so I don't have time for that anymore. I don't have time for that anymore. And I don't have time for that anymore. And I don't have time for that anymore. Because I have a dream. It becomes the collecting power. The dream, when it is rooted in God's dream, it becomes the correcting power. And my life has mid-flight corrections. The God's dream is the correcting force, the collecting force, and it is the connecting force. Immediately I'm connected with Him through Jesus Christ. Fantastic! And that's why we can say a God-given dream not only has starting power, but sustaining power. And finally, it is satisfying power. Every day has a satisfaction. Yes, every day you can see moving a little closer toward that great day when, when your dream comes true. But I'm satisfied because I know I've got God's dream. I know where I'm going. I know what my two-year goals are. I know what my five and ten and I know what my twelve-year goal is. And by God, that's a terrifically satisfying feeling. And when these dreams come true, you look back and you think, wow, we really helped a lot of people, didn't we? We really helped a lot of people, didn't we? And nothing could be more satisfying than that. I think, if I may say, probably you need a to come so close to Jesus Christ right now that you will live in Him, you'll move in Him, you'll get a dream, it'll get you started, it'll keep you going, and it'll finally make it all worthwhile. That's what you call starting, sustaining, and satisfying power. How do you start? Through prayer. Oh. You had a fractured skull, but you've suffered blows. You don't even know if you dare to dream anymore. You don't know if you want to run the risk of hoping anymore. Because hope can be awfully risky. I invite you to choose life. When you've got a dream, there's hope. Where there's hope, there's life. Because in Him we live and move ahead with possibility, thinking that's the power of a God-given dream. This picture frame has the uplifting message, Be Happy You Are Loved, engraved in a delicate heart on the corner of the frame. So we'll listen to you.
Congratulations. Oh, thank you. That was a big moment in life. Indeed it was. <laughs> That's hard work and a big accomplishment. Oh, indeed, yes. And then next was what, Judge Cowley? Well, after I finished school, I, as I said, I went into the Army for a couple of years. Of course, that was during the Korean War. We did not have much choice in the matter at that time since we were drafted. Although it was a very good experience, I must say, uh, and I would recommend the military or even naval service, army, air force, really? whichever. Really? It is a tremendous force in maturing an individual. It's a great power in developing the personality really? and converting a boy into a man. Really? So I'd strongly urge anyone who is at all interested in the uh, military to have no hesitation whatsoever about joining. And Uncle Sam wants you. Yes, yes, yes. Well, he may want you, but he does have a lot to offer, too. There's no doubt about that. So I was in the Army during the Korean War period. And then I came out of the Army. Yes. And the choice then was where to go to settle down. Yes. Appreciated working with Judge Beinstein. I think the world of that man, and he was a wonderful individual to work with. And, of course, the more you tried to do for him, the more he tried to really? encourage me to. Nice. So here was a most mutually satisfactory uh, working arrangement. Yeah. So I was with him up until the time that I did seek the nomination for Westchester County Court Judge. Oh. So uh, then I worked hard to get that nomination. Did you? Fortunate enough to be one of the nominees. Yes. Uh, there were, uh, of course, for the Supreme Court, you see, it is not limited to Westchester County. It's but it covers Westchester, Putnam, Dutchess County, and then it goes over on the other side of the river, too. Orange and Rockland. Right. Many of the, all of these counties are included in this district. So, uh, the ninth district. The ninth district, right you are. So when it judge Cowie, uh, will you please tell the boys and girls what you like best about being a judge? I think one of the greatest things and most enjoyable aspects of being a judge is that you meet so many people, such a great variety of people, and you run into so many experiences as a result of handling all of these cases. I have found that these real life experiences can be more exciting and more interesting than even the, the best of TV shows or the like of it. Yes, yes. Is, as has often been said, uh, real life can be more interesting yes. than any uh, th yes. theater production. Right. And there's a lot of truth to that. Yep. Truth is stranger than fiction. We, I, could, I could almost write several books here just on the yeah. basis of the type people that we meet and the cases and the experiences yeah, we story. run into. Uh -huh. Folks, this is Glendora. How are you today? I'd like to have you meet a friend of mine, Barney Daly.
is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it.